Ah, hello again. Why don't you guys come up and join me? We're gonna install a chimney today. This is actually perfect timing, uh, putting this wood, this wood chimney in, you know, so people can burn a little bit of wood. It's, it's totally okay because yesterday in the mail, and uh, it probably works different where you live, where I live here, I got a carbon tax credit back. Can you believe that? So basically what they do is they take a whole ton of money away from you throughout the year and uh, do who knows what they do with it. And then um, once in a while they give you like a little teeny check back. So, you know, you can smile about it and they hope that you vote for them again. So I'm clear now uh, to, to, put a, to put a fossil fuel burning appliance in uh, because, you know, I'm all, I'm all up to speed on my, my tax credits there. That's, that's how you save the earth. You pay more tax. Well, you've landed back on the Spruce Stomper YouTube channel. T-shirt weather, sunglasses, I'm squinting at the camera, it's so bright, but that's gonna be short-lived. Look at these babies. Yellow leaves falling from the trees, fall time. This chimney for a future wood furnace needs to get put in this building. Uh, well, before it gets frosty and uh, you won't see me climbing up on a tin roof in the snow. So I'll find the wood chimney for a wood furnace. Well, it's not super common, but on the buildings that I build, it, it does come up. And it's one of those things where it's kind of hard to find someone to do it because it's a one-off thing and people are busy and you think, well, I'll phone a heating guy and the heating guy's, oh, we don't do that. Man, it's not rocket science. And where we're at, it has to be inspected by a third party to be certified. Can't go wrong. So the best thing to do is check and make sure you got all the pieces before you start. This came in a kit, bucket kit or a ceiling support kit, if you will. And it also depends on how many floors you got to go through. But in our case, we're just going through one ceiling. So bucket kit, trim, there's a cap for it, storm collars, weather flashings, and the chimney itself. Now, I'm not going to explain what all this stuff is. Why don't we install it piece by piece and take it from there? I if it sounds echoey, that's because it is echoey. There's nothing in this building. Way it goes today this we got super lucky the wood furnace is going to be located here at the back of the building and they said wouldn't it be aesthetically pleasing if we could put it between the window and that exhaust fan you know it's out from the wall but that way it's not blocking the the window and that sort of thing well man i'll tell you it is perfect it is perfect because we live in snow load country so let's walk out here and i'll show you what i mean all right, for chimney installs, I'm not usually a big fan of inspections and rules and this kind of thing, but in these instances, it really makes sense. So keep in mind, we might be in different parts of the country, the world, the province, the state, rules might be different. So um, you, you gotta watch how you do this stuff. Fire's not funny when it uh, gets where it's not supposed to be. So I'm just gonna point out a few things that I do before we even start, because uh, obviously the placement of the chimney is, well, it's critical. Makes or breaks the whole operation. So for where we're at, there's a couple of rules that you gotta follow. The chimney has gotta be a certain distance away from combustibles for a certain length. It also has to extend above the roof and the roof line a certain amount. In our case, on the back side of the chimney, it has to be two feet above everything within 10 feet of it with a minimum of three feet of chimney sticking out the front if it's down the slope. If that makes any sense, just, just let's bear that in mind. Two feet above anything within 10 feet. You don't want that baby getting buried with snow. Now the other thing you want to shoot for is you want that chimney right up there near the peak, if possible. In an open accessory building, it's fairly possible. In a house, well maybe not so possible, right? There's a lot of other things to deal with. But if you have a chimney away down here and it's gotta be sticking away up here, the snow is incredible on this roof. So there's a whole lot more that goes into that chimney. It has to have support brackets. It has to have a snow shear on and on and on. So if you can get that baby right up near the peak and I'll show you when we install it, it is absolutely ideal. You cut down on costs, you cut down on the risk of snow being a problem and it makes the install a heck of a lot easier. 
Man, that's far off the ground, eh? Everything I do, so far off the ground. So we know we want the chimney roughly to run between this window and this fan. I'm gonna air a little bit more side to the fan because there's still window trim that's gotta go on this window and I want it to look balanced. So and that right there, make a mark. I got a tool on me that's gonna save a ladder trip here because I wanna reference this to the ceiling. So turn that on, I don't know if you, Got a laser distance measure. I'm just gonna measure over from the mark to the wall. 16 foot 10 and 11 sixteenths. So what you're gonna look up is the model of the stove and then on the installation side, uh, they're gonna have all the offsets for the different kinds of installation applications. So once you got that looked up, this is a, this is a Blaze King 40. Oh man, tell ya. Doesn't that just make you feel warm and cozy right off the hop? It requires a 16 and an eighth inches from the nearest combustible or wall to the center point of where the stove pipe attaches. And it has a minimum requirement of six inches from the back of the stove to nearest combustible. So we, we've got plenty of clearance. Oh yeah, so I got, I'm 16, we're 16 inches just to that first truss, so. We'll keep it tight to that back side of that truss. And that should put us, I mean, that'll put us perfectly in where we, where we wanna be. So now before you go cutting holes in a ceiling, pretty solid plan to sneak up in the attic and have a little peek see as to what's up there. Electrical wires do not like saws, it turns out. And I don't want the electricians to come back. I'll tell you, it feels good to uh, be filming a longer length video. I, I've been hammering the YouTube shorts. I, I hope you folks don't mind that. They've, uh, well, they've really been helping the, the channel subscriber count, which is encouraging. Anybody home? Geez, I hope not. Anything living up here is not gonna be good at this point. <clears throat> All right, now that we're up here, I got this handy light, man. It came with this uh, Creators Edition GoPro. And look how good it works as a flashlight. Sometimes you just get lucky. So here's where we're at. It's all about reference points. So I can't see the bottom. I can't see our mark in the bottom, but I do know from the middle of that light, 32 inches over is our mark. So that's good. Cause that puts us right in this here box. On this style of building, the last two truss bases are blocked every 24 inch on center. Uh, this diagonal, not a big deal. Well, not a big deal. If you were a plumber or electrician, you'd be like, oh, it's not a big deal. And you just hackety chop it out of the way. We are going to remove this brace and then we're gonna relocate it so it isn't in our way. Cause every board that I put up here and I put all these in here, I frame the whole building. That's there for a reason. So we're just gonna relocate it over a little bit. So you still have that diagonal cross and the measurements work out. Our bucket kit box is 14 by 14. So we want it to be tight to that truss space anyways. And it just so happens that that block that's already there is also in the right place to be in line with that window downstairs. So we really only have to cut two boards and uh, the framing is done. Man, I'll tell you, when you win, you win. See up here, can I, you can probably see, see all that. There is a lot of bracing in, in this truss system. It was a lot of work, to be honest. A lot of work, way down there. That's 80 feet, that light down there. So there's the box framed up for the, the chimney support. I spanned, uh, you know, from truss to truss. Then I got my cross block here. This is 14 and an eighth by 14 and an eighth, just a little bit of clearance so we don't have to fight. And I also wanted to point out, I did not put the chimney support kit tight to the truss. Now the reason for this is that we have to cut a hole through the ceiling up here 
and that'll give us an extra, I put the block on the bottom, so it's gonna space that chimney kit out an inch and a half further, and that inch and a half is gonna make a, a lot of difference when we go to cut this hole in up top, uh, because I, I like to cut it, it's easy to cut it with a jigsaw and cut through everything in one shot, and a little bit more space to clear, that co the cordless the cordless jigsaw, she's bulky. It's got that great big battery hanging off the back, so <clears throat> just something I kinda remembered to do. Hello? I don't see anybody. Just us chickens. Man, I'll tell you, some days a helper would be awesome. You know, you could be like, hey helper, bring me my water jug so I don't have to get down. <laughs> oh, a big shiny piece of metal. That'll come in handy in a minute or two. Look at these pencils here. My wife bought those for me at a garage sale. A whole bundle of them, and isn't that uplifting? It's an octopus, it says, hooray. Man, I'll tell you, the day just keeps getting better. First on the ticket, the bucket kit or ceiling support or whatever you want to call it. Now, there's rules for this too. How do I know this? Well, I read the uh, instructions it comes with. It's always good to refresh yourself. They want to see a minimum of three and a half inches of this box extended below the ceiling height. <clears throat> We're going to give it an extra half an inch. Well, that isn't, that isn't right. We got to back this up a notch. That ain't right. Four inches sticking out. We have a two by four plus half inch thick of sheeting. So we need eight inches. Cause I won't be able to see, the marks are in the right spot. Those will be flush with the plywood. I just won't be able to see them in the attic. In Okay, so this is supposed to slip into this, but I suspect that we may have to notch this as well. Okay, yep, we're gonna have to notch this. So you have to lay out, this is how I rigged this up. You gotta lay out this, to here. So what a lot of guys will do, or I've seen happen, is they'll find the center of this, maybe with a plumb bob or something, and then they'll just draw their circle, the diameter of this pipe plus their two inches of clearance. It doesn't work. This is a round pipe. This is not gonna be a round hole because it's on a slope. The roof is angled, so. What I have is I have just taped a pen to this level from the tip of the pen to the edge of the level is the, my two inches plus a little bit of clearance so that when you put the level on the edge of the chimney, then you can transfer that mark like that. And then you just go around and do that in a few spots and you end up with a pretty, pretty accurate layout. First tool is a Drill the pilot hole on the, on the line, obviously. And then we jigsaw it. There's your layer cake of roofing, the tin, the underlay, and the OSB. There you go. Now you can't always put them in from the bottom side. Sometimes you gotta carry the chimney up onto the roof and drop it down through the hole. But I'd say we're gonna get lucky here. Go like this. Like that. This particular model or brand of chimney, it twists lock together. So you just give her a good, and it locks. Some of them got. And look who it is. Now, you're gonna see a bit of a problem here. We're looking a little short. You know what I'm saying? 
a little short on one end. Now, uh, here's the reality of construction. We started filming this video. All the materials were here. They'd already been dropped off. I mean, I had a look at them, but you know, I just had a quick look uh, the day before and it was what it was. I didn't have time to get more stuff anyways. Well, they got me two four foot lengths a pipe and yes that got through the roof but you know we're uh, we're running short here i think so you see some videos are like oh and they, they would wait and then wait and get the piece and finish it that isn't going to be the case for me i don't have time for that i need it as much done as i can so we're going to do all this up we're going to button it up and then we're just going to put a temporary lid on this and monday We'll have the final piece and it'll just clip on and it'll be over but 95 percent of the work will be done today because for anybody that does work that has any sort of schedule one delay a domino falls in the schedule and it, it can bugger up the whole next week so we're gonna press forward that's what i'm saying okay because we don't have the next piece of pipe and this is a uh, it's important that this is lined up it's, I've got these, these offsets here, like that all around, and those are gonna rest up against the pipe. So I've just made pencil marks, get that line back up there, like so. That's on my pencil marks. And then I just simply took a straight edge, uh, my, my Hooray octopus pencil here, and I just lay that on the flat, bring it up. See, it's just touching that offset. Bring it up, it's just touching the offset, just touching the offset, and so on and so forth. So now I know that that chimney is centered in this collar, and I've marked it out so I know I can duplicate it. I can put it right back where she needs to go. Look how quickly, oh, there it goes. <laughs> butterfly. Is it a butterfly? It might be a moth. I don't know. Okay, with a quick trip down the ladder, this is what we got here now uh, with the, the roof flashing. So what I like to do is, we'll get you right in here. I've actually trimmed it around the ribs tight and bent a lip down so it fits tight in the valleys all the way across. Now, a lot of times you're just gonna see it run out flat and there's gonna be a space underneath. Um, it's a big space. These ribs are seven eighths of an inch tall. So you'll see it like, you know, somebody's tried to fill it full of caulking or you're not sealing water. That's not the point. Water runs downhill. That's on the downhill side of the flashing. The reason I trim them around and bend that tab, bugs and bats. Uh, you want to keep it tight. This ridge cap is all sealed with foam enclosure strips. You can tuck foam or some other material up underneath there, but unless you adhere it in there, it can slide out. But where's that steel, that galvanized steel cut tight like that? That's forever. Uh, a bat and bugs will not chew through metal. So, uh, plus, plus, I mean, come on. Look how good that looks. Up. You can kind of see where I'm headed with this. It's easier to make things out of cardboard the first time, especially when ladder trips are involved, then uh, making them out of steel and be disappointed. So we got a cardboard template. And of course the way that's gonna work is it tucks up underneath the ridge cap, making that waterproof, water comes down. And I like to go as a rule, at least halfway down the, fl uh, the, the roof flashing. So this is gonna be lapped over that. We'll screw that down. We'll bring up some sealant. Underneath this is a rib, so water cannot get up and in. And the same on this side. We've got a rib up and in. And if you didn't, if you didn't land on a rib like this, all you do is the same as we did on the front. You'd bend a tab over and uh, run a bead of sealant in behind that so water cannot drive in, it is deflected away and down. But um, 
hands down, the cardboard is the way to go. Make a template and then there's no trimming on the roof. The less work you have to do on the roof, the better. Absolutely. Oh, look at that, it even folds in half. It's a, it's a convenient carry-all template. Ah, here's a shiny piece of metal that we talked about. The Makita Nibbler. Like I said, it's perfect for cutting curves. That's what it's, it's handy for. If you have watched the YouTube short that is due to come out in about 10 minutes, this is the feature tool. Okay, let's get at her. Okay, gr granted, I mean, a set of shears is the ideal tool for just cutting straight lines, but I mean, what are, you, are you gonna run to the trailer and grab a different tool set up twice, or you just nibble it off? That turned out good. Let's take it up top, find out. Hey, everything fit perfect. So, lapped over top of the flashing, it's up underneath the ridge cap. I caulked under there, just in case water wanted to wick back. This has bead of caulk underneath of it. And then, of course, the backside is sealed with sealant. Ah, too bad we're just short. One length, eh? Like one, mm, three foot piece probably. One more length, but just for a little closure for you. Imagine there is a piece of chimney sticking. Oh, so I, I needed that plastic. See ya. Hmm, Should have stuck it in my pocket. The storm collar will go on like that with that bolt, get tightened up around the chimney cap. And then you run a bead of sealant around this to seal it to the chimney. And then the whole dang thing gets a hat on top of it like that. That also has a bolt to fasten it down. And that's it. Out of sight, out of mind, cozy and warm. A little bit windier up here. I like this kind of work. It's specialized just enough that you have to know a few rules and a few techniques. And the outcome, well, the outcome is nice. I mean, it just looks good. It looks good. It's like, it's like it's just been factory imprinted into the roof. I'm happy. I'm glad you were here to enjoy it with me. So, on to the next adventure. Whatever that might be. Thanks for watching. Well, there you go. For now, it's uh, now it's just a skylight. For now. It's got a little plastic condom hat on top of it there. There you go. <laughs> ah, just in case she rains. Parts on the way. Parts on the way. Isn't that what you always hear? How come the job's not done? Oh, waiting for material. When's it gonna be done? Oh, when the material gets here. When's the material gonna get here? Oh, I don't know. So what you're telling me is you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs>